This is a Dietzken Map Measure Model 1718. It was made in Switzerland. It's got a metal handle about the thickness of a pencil. The dial is behind a glass face and it spins whenever you spin the tiny wheel on the very bottom. You just roll it. This model was first manufactured in the 1920s, but mine isn't that old. It's hard for me to say exactly when this thing was made. I found an old catalog and a price list for Dietzken map measures dated 1925. At that time they were selling this model for $3.50. So they were making this model in the 20s, but mine can't actually be that old. I've got the original cardboard box, which definitely isn't 100 years old. And it came to me with this little plastic baggie that fits it perfectly. If this plastic is original, then this thing was made no earlier than the 40s or 50s, but it could be any time, really. Anyway, it's meant for measuring distances of curves. You roll it around, and the dial tells you how far you rolled. The little wheel on the bottom is a little sharp, kind of like a silverware knife. It won't cut you, but it's got an edge to it that'll stick on the paper so it won't slide around. The thing is really beautifully made. This company was making map measures for a long time, so they really perfected the design. I love the swoop at the bottom. The measuring wheel could have been mounted directly under the dial, but they set it off to the side like this. Somehow this visual cue makes it obvious that you're supposed to roll it this way rather than that way. I'm not sure why that shape just cries out to be rolled in a certain direction. Here's one strange thing. The dial makes a full revolution around in 99 centimeters. Why didn't they make it 100? That means if I'm measuring something really long and I end up spinning the dial all the way around once and landing on 38, the total distance isn't 138, it's 137. Wouldn't it be easier if they calibrated one revolution at 100 centimeters? Maybe there's a good reason they did it this way, but it seems strange to me. It's also weird that there's no zero labeled on the dial. They label 99, which is the maximum amount, rather than zero, which is the minimum amount. It seems strange. My only real complaint about this device is there's no way to quickly reset it to zero, like a button that resets the dial. When you're ready to measure something, you have to roll the little wheel yourself until the thing spins back to the top. It's not a big deal, though. If you're like me, you wonder how accurate this thing is. I'll draw a six-inch straight line and see how it does. Right on the six, pretty good. Really, this thing is meant for measuring curvy lines on maps. I got this old book of maps of the state of Connecticut. Let's measure the length of the coastline in the town of Fairfield, where my university is. The reading is about 8.75 inches. Then I multiply by the map scale and it gives me 4.82 miles, which sounds about right. Obviously the accuracy of this measurement is limited by the size of the map I have, right? I guess it'd be more accurate if I had a map that was zoomed in closer. That's because if it was zoomed in more, you'd be able to see some extra little wiggles in this line that aren't visible in the zoomed out version. So I guess the distance would automatically be longer on a zoomed in map because of the extra wiggles, right? This is actually a strange but true fact. Since wiggly lines are longer than straight lines, and things can only get more wiggly when you zoom in, not less, that means whenever you zoom in on something, its distance will never be shorter. It could only be longer. So if you have an object in the real world, like, say, the coastline of my town, it's actually not really possible to say exactly what its length is. That's because the length you measure depends on the scale that you measure it on. And when you zoom the scale in closer and closer, this will just increase the length out to infinity. I'm not making this up. This is called the coastline paradox. It was the subject of the first major work by Benoit Mandelbrot in the 1960s. He's the father of the mathematics of fractals. The moral of the story is curvy things in the natural world are weird, and they don't really have a true length. Anyway, was I talking? Oh, yeah, this thing. So here I have a device whose purpose is to measure something that, strictly speaking, doesn't really exist. For most purposes, it's not a big deal, though. Things like hiking trails or roads are wiggly at a large scale, but they don't get increasingly, infinitely wiggly as you zoom in on them. So on those kinds of things, generally you can get a measurement which is useful and fairly consistent across scales. It's a real classy instrument. It's super small, but has some real weight to it. It feels like a fancy mechanical watch. 
and the weight of it is perfect for what it does. You know, if it was too light, it would fly around on the paper while you're measuring. The weight helps you slow down a bit and stay on target. Hey, I just noticed the dial spins counterclockwise. Is that weird? I found this photo of another one that looks almost exactly the same, but it goes clockwise. I guess I don't really care which way it goes, as long as it goes all the way to 99. <laughs>